Welcome to a new video in the series of videos that together forms an introduction to systems biology. In this uh, video we ask the question what is a state and how do you recognize one? How do you find them and what do they do? Uh, and this uh, is part of the teaching material of ISP group uh, which has this homepage and all of this material is uh, free to use and spread as you want as long as you say where it's from. And in this teaching material, we divide the material and the knowledge that we need to acquire into uh, three clouds. And now we are in the cloud, uh, how to formulate knowledge into mathematical equations. And we also divided the material into two steps. And we now we are in the first uh, step, which ultimately will lead to uh, an answer to the question of if we can reject a model or not. This is where we are in the bigger scheme of, scheme of things. So let's go to some basics. Um, the easiest way to recognize a state or to identify a state is to uh, write the model in the standard uh, form of an ODE or in the state space form. And, and this, uh, this format, the standard form of an ODE or an ordinary differential equation looks like this. So here we have some x, which is being derived with respect to time. So we have x and then a dot above it. Um, uh, and this is simply another way of writing this. So if we have something with a dot above it, uh, it just means uh, that x is being derived with respect to time. Uh, and this derivative, x dot, uh, is given by some function which depends on some various things. And if we have it in this standard form of an ODE, if we have it in this state space form, then the states simply are x. They are given by the vector x. So if we say it in words, it simply means that x um, uh, or the states are the thing that appears under the dot, or if we have it in this form, the, the things that are being derived. So those are the states. The, the things. Uh, that we have the time derivative of. So now let's go to some basic properties of these states before we learn to recognize it in some various um, examples. So the first thing is that the state typically depends on time. And why is that? Well, it's simply because uh, the states uh, have a time derivative. And unless f here is constantly equal to zero, which it may be, and sometimes it is, but typically it's not. Typically, it's, um, uh, f here is a non-zero function. And then x has a time derivative, which means as you move forward in time or backward in time, um, x will change. So x will typically depend on time. And um, the other thing is that the states are not directly measured, or they are not equal to the measurements. So if we have this standard control engineering view of a system, where we have some system here that we do things to, in the inputs that we do things, uh, and then we can measure some kind of response to the system. There are some things that we can measure from this system. Then uh, uh, the states are neither of these things, but the states are intrinsic to the system. The, the states are actually what defines the system. So if we want to define what state the system is in, what, where is the system now, then the state is a um, complete description of that. So if we know where the system is at a specific time, uh, or if we want to know where the system is at a specific time point, if we want to com completely describe it, then we simply need to know the state. And then we don't need to know anything about the history of the system. Okay, so uh, now let's go to some examples and let's learn to identify these states in the uh, three different ways that we have of writing up a model. Um, and in all of these three examples, the, questions, the question is the same. What are the states in this model? And we start with the easiest way to recognize it. It's simply when we have this standard uh, state space format. And then what we simply should look for are the time derivatives or this uh, thing, these dots. And here we see that we have two such equations, uh, one for x1 and one for x2. 
and the other equations here have no dot and no time derivative. Uh, so the answer here is simply x1 and x2. Uh, and when looking at answers on previous years' ex examinations, uh, a common uh, a common mistake is to not answer x1 and x2, but to answer x1 uh, dot and x2 dot. And those are not the states; those are the uh, the time derivatives of the states, but they are not the states themselves. And another thing, which I sort of said in the previous page, is that there is a difference between the measurements and the states. And that is even if we would have uh, uh, a measurement of the state, then y hat here, which is the measurement, so this is the measurement equation, uh, even if we have it like this, then y hat is not a state, uh, because there is no differential equation for y hat. There is a differential equation for x, so x is used to describe the system, and y hat is simply a description of what we can measure. And in this particular case, it happens uh, to be so that what we can measure is a state. But uh, y hat here is the measurement and x1 is the state. One describes the system and one describes what we can measure. So, uh, let's go to uh, another way of writing up the system. The question is the same. And now we write the system up using reactions. And uh, now this, this model is not as fully specified uh, as the other one was, but it's uh, sufficient to, rec to identify the states. Uh, and we have two reactions, uh, R1 and R2. In the first, A and B together forms C, and this is the uh, rate at which this reaction uh, occurs. And in the other one, B is being broken down somehow uh, with this rate. And here now, if we would convert uh, this model into a state space form, or this ordinary differential equation form. Uh, we would just look for the things that would appear under the dots, uh, but we don't have to do that. We can simply, um, uh, to answer this, we can, we can simply um, see what would change over time uh, here. And here, uh, in this reaction, A and B are being used up. So uh, A and B, or the concentration of A and B, or the amount of A and B, would uh, change as this reaction flows, and, and the amount or concentration of C would increase, and, the, and here B would be changed. So uh, A, B, and C here would be changed, and they would have a differential equation each in this, um, in this um, model. So the answer here uh, are simply uh, the, the three states are the concentration or amount of um, A, B, and C. And here I want to to uh, uh, to, to say this that um, uh, uh, there is a difference between the states uh, that appear in the differential equation, so uh, uh, and the things that appear in the reactions. So in the reaction, you simply write that A together with B. Uh, become C in this reaction. So some substrate plus some other gives a third one. And that is not the same as the concentration or amount of these. So if we should be uh, strict, there is a difference uh, between these two things. Uh, in some previous years, I might have been a bit uh, sloppy on this, but, uh, but if we should be strict, then this is the, the, the states or that thing that changes over time. So let's go now to the final, uh, final way of writing up a model, and uh, that is simply the interaction graph format, uh, where we again have it um, in terms of reactions, and we have one reaction a x uh, that con that uh, converts x to y, and another that converts uh, y uh, and z into uh, something else, something outside the system. So y and z comes together, uh, and they form something that is being degraded or that leaves the system somehow. And um, here, there is a key difference between these two reactions, because um, here z is being used. So here z would change when this reaction, um, the second reaction here, flows. Z is being used up, but in this first reaction here, uh, 
u is not being uh, is not being used, but it's simply affecting the system. So you see that there is a difference here between these two arrows. So here, this means that u here changes the rate at which this reaction appears. So if we would look here at, at the reaction rate uh, for the first reaction, u would appear there. But there is no differential equation for u because u is not being used in any in any reaction or is not being uh, produced in any reaction. So u here is an input to the system. Whereas x, y and z are being used uh, or produced in the reactions and they would change over time. So the answer is simply that uh, the amount, and here we specify it in the amount, in the previous example it was in the in concentrations, but uh, here we specify it in amount, uh, the amount of x, the amount of y and the amount of z. Those are the states. And again here, note that u is here an input to the system and it's because it only appears as a modifier. It's not being affected by the system. It only enters and affects the system. Okay, so that's it about states.